the next 30 minutes, we take you through all the stories making headlines in India and across the globe. Cuba's president, Raul Castro, will step down in April next year. Raul, who took over after his brother Fidel Castro, has been president of Cuba since 2008. His exit could mean that Cuba will now have its first non-Castro president in more than 40 years. General elections will be held in Cuba, reportedly on April 19th, to elect the next president. Ousted Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has nominated his brother Shahbaz Sharif as party's prime ministerial candidate for the upcoming elections. Shahbaz, who is also the chief minister of Punjab province, was nominated after senior leaders of the Pakistan's Muslim League held a meeting at Nawaz Sharif's residence. During the meet, Nawaz Sharif lauded his brother and his hard-working nature and devotion to public service. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has reportedly executed the official in charge of country's nuclear site facilities. Park In-young was the chief of North Korea's Bureau 13, which is a division of ruling party's committee tasked with the supervision of military facilities, including nuclear test sites. In-young has been reportedly executed for the delay to the sixth and most powerful nuclear test on September 3rd. The nuclear test was postponed due to delays in the tunnel construction. Ukraine has detained a high-level government official on suspicion of working as a Russian spy. Stanislav Yezhov, who was a senior government translator, was allegedly passing on crucial and critical information to his Russian handlers. He is now facing charges of treason. Stanislav Yezhov had the access to sensitive government information. He was allegedly working for the Russians for nearly two years and was recruited by Russian agents while he travelled abroad. Yezhov had reportedly previously accompanied Prime Minister Vladimir Groesman various, on various foreign trips. U.S. has reportedly killed Al-Qaeda propaganda chief in a drone strike in Yemen. Saudi-born Abu Hazar al-Maki was killed along with three Al-Qaeda militants when a drone blew up their vehicle in the western province of Marib. The reports come as U.S. has intensified its long-running drone war against the Al-Qaeda in the country since President Donald Trump took charge. More than 120 airstrikes have been carried out by the United States against terror groups. The South Sudan government and rebel groups have signed a ceasefire in an attempt to end the civil war in the youngest country in the world. The ceasefire that will come in effect from Sunday will allow humanitarian groups access to civilians caught in the fighting. The agreement aims to revive the 2015 peace deal which collapsed after heavy fighting in capital Juba last year. The United Nations has rejected reports that the two journalists arrested in Myanmar had passed any information to the world body. Domestic media in Myanmar claims that the two journalists were detained for allegedly sending photographs obtained during their reporting on violence in Rakhine to the United Nations. The journalists are being investigated under the country's Colonial Year Official Secrets Act, which carries a maximum prison term of 14 years. The United States has imposed sanctions on Myanmar General Mong Mong So, who oversaw the brutal crackdown against the Rohingya Muslims in Rakhine State. So was among 13 individuals who U.S. calls serious human rights abusers and corrupt actors. A dog which had lost its front legs in a violent attack was given a new lease of life with a pair of high-tech carbon fiber racing blades. Kola lost his legs after a man in Thailand attacked him with a sword for chewing his shoes. He was later rescued by the founder of Phuket-based animal rescue charity, the Soy Dog Foundation. The United Nations General Assembly overwhelmingly rejected Donald Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. 
India, alongside with 128 nations, passed a resolution against Trump's Jerusalem decision. Though the resolution is non-binding, but a strong vote in support of the UN resolution carries political weightage. The United States, however, has rejected the United Nations' votes and have stated that Washington will continue with its plan to have its embassy in Jerusalem. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said uh, that the United States will remember this day and America will put their embassy in Jerusalem and no vote in the United Nations will make any difference to that decision. She also added that this vote will make a difference on how Americans look at the UN and on how they look at countries who disrespect the U.S. in the U.N. Uh, and also they will remember it when they make generous contributions to the U.N. as uh, they have very legitimate expectations uh, that their goodwill will be recognized and respected in the U.N. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has also rejected the United Nations General Assembly vote. On the other hand, the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has hailed the UN vote as a victory for Palestine. Meanwhile, people in Gaza burnt pictures of US President Donald Trump and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Meanwhile, celebrations erupted in Jordan after the United Nations General Assembly rejected Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. In Jordan, more than 100 people gathered outside the U.S. Embassy in Amman and celebrated the United Nations decision. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence touched down in Afghanistan on late Thursday night for an unannounced trip during his visit uh, to the South Asian nation as the U.S. Vice President Pence meet, will meet with Afghan President Ashraf Khani and Chief Executive CEO Abdullah Abdullah. He called for political reforms in the country to which President Ghani assured him that an election commission was developing a framework for parliamentary elections in 2018. Pence also met with the American soldiers deployed in the war-ravaged country. Pence underscored U.S. commitment to the country four months after President Donald Trump pledged to step up military campaign against Taliban militants. President Donald Trump visited with U.S. military veterans uh, who are being treated at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland on Thursday. He shook hands with and spoke to several patients inside Walter Reed's USO Warrior and Family Center. Tech giant Alphabet has said that its executive chairman Eric Schmidt will step down from his position to become a technical advisor as of its next regular board meeting in January 2018. He will continue to serve on the Alphabet's board of directors. The company expects the board to appoint a non-executive chairman at its next meeting in January. Puerto Ricans who are still recovering from devastating hurricanes have said that um, hardships like lack of water and electricity has made it difficult to celebrate the holiday season in full swing. Earlier this week, Puerto Rico's governor ordered a review of the deaths that occurred in the U.S. territory after Hurricane Maria struck following multiple media reports that the death toll was far higher than the official count. The country has been struggling to rebuild since Hurricane Maria slammed into the island on September 20th as the strongest storm to hit it in nine decades. A national dialogue uh, congress that aims to end the Syrian crisis is actively under preparation in the Kazakh capital of Astana, where a fresh round of Syrian peace talks have begun. Alexander Lavrentiev, who is the special representative of the president of the Russian Federation for Syria, made the remarks at a press briefing after meeting with the Syrian government delegation to the eighth round of Astana talks that are spearheaded by Russia, Turkey and Iran. Actor Sylvester Stallone has denied an accusation that he raped a woman in the 1990s and said the allegation was completely fabricated. Media in the U.S. reported that a woman had recently reported the allegation dating back to the 1990s against Stallone to Santa Monica police. 
Stallone's attorney Martin Singer said on Thursday that a woman had filed a police report alleging a rape that occurred 27 years ago. Bolivian doctors and health professionals continue clashing with the police in the streets of La Paz on Thursday as they held their 26th strike. Emergency rooms remained open at most of Bolivia's hospitals as medical workers walked out on the job as a standoff with the government of President Evo Morales intensified. Excitement was at its peak at London's newly refurbished Victoria Palace Theatre for the opening night of the hit Broadway musical Hamilton. The highly acclaimed hip-hop style show tells the story of how penniless immigrant Alexander Hamilton became the right-hand man to General George Washington. It uses a musical combination of hip-hop and rap, R&B, ballet and traditional Broadway to tell the story. Creator Lynn Manuel Miranda, who attended the opening night in high spirits, said it was a show for everyone. Peruvians turned out in huge numbers in support of President Pedro Pablo Cuzin on Thursday after he told lawmakers that the country's democracy was at stake ahead of a congressional vote to remove him from office. The right wing populist party that controls Congress hopes to remove. Kuzinski from office in a vote on Thursday on grounds that he is morally unfit to govern after finding that he once had business connections with a company at the center of Latin America's biggest graft scandal. U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of State Tim Lenderking has said that there was no military solution to the conflict in Yemen. Earlier, President Donald Trump threatened to cut off financial aid to countries that voted on Thursday in favor of a United Nations General Assembly resolution calling for the United States to drop its recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Authorities have lifted evacuation orders imposed as the massive Thomas fire scorched swaths of Southern California as firefighters moved closer to victory over the destructive inferno. An area of 272,000 acres has been burnt since the inferno, inferno broke out on December 4th and firefighters are describing it as 60% contained. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection said that a recent period of windy weather had made little impact on the fire, which has destroyed more than 1,300 structures. Well, India and China will hold the next round of border talks in New Delhi today, the first after the 73-day-long military standoff between the two countries in Doklam in summer months. The External Affairs Ministry said at the invitation of India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval and the Special Representative on the Boundary Question, Yang Jiechi, State Councillor and China's Special Representative on the issue, is in India to hold the 20th SR level meeting. Rahul Gandhi will chair a meeting of the Congress Working Committee, his first as Congress's president. The CWC will accord a warm welcome to the new president and likely to discuss the current political situation, including the ramifications of the Congress's strong performance in the Gujarat Assembly polls for the party in the future. Party sources said the 2G Spectrum case judgment acquitting all the accused is also likely to be discussed. The BJP and Prime Minister Narendra Modi had used the alleged scam to the hilt while mounting a fierce campaign against the Congress in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. The BJP has zeroed in on five-time MLA and veteran leader Jairam Thakur as its chief ministerial candidate and a formal announcement to this effect is expected today. Thakur and J.P. Nadda's names were doing the rounds after the party's CM pick Prem Kumar Dhumal lost to Congress's Rajinder Rana by 2,000 votes in Sajjanpur. Air quality in the national capital region including Delhi deteriorated to severe plus or emergency category on Thursday after a hiatus of 36 days. Earlier, the NCR faced an emergency or severe plus air pollution situation between November 7th and 14th. With the NCR reached in smog since Wednesday, pollution levels witnessed a spike due to several meteorological factors. Delhi is facing an emergency situation for the past many hours. 
Rejecting rumors that December 25th would be the last meeting between Kulbushan Jadhav and his family, Pakistan on Thursday said that the death row convict is under no threat of immediate execution as his mercy petition is still pending for review. Jadhav, a former Indian Navy officer, was arrested in Pakistan and was charged with espionage. Foreign Office spokesman Dr. Mohammad Faisal said that a media interaction with the family could be arranged if India permits. A woman patient breathed her last in an ambulance which got stuck in a massive traffic jam during the Bihar shutdown called by opposition Rashtriya Janata Dal. When asked about the incident, senior RJD leader Raghuvaj Prasad said that such incidents happen during agitation and some people also die sometimes. 35-year-old Sumari Devi, who was critically ill, was being taken from Mahanar in Hajipur to a Patna hospital. But the ambulance was caught in traffic on the Mahatma Gandhi Setu, which connects North Bihar to Patna and is considered a lifeline for the northern districts. The police on Wednesday carried out a raid at an ashram in Rohini following the Delhi High Court order to inspect the institute where girls and women were allegedly kept in illegal confinement. The court had dubbed the situation in the institute located in North Delhi's Rohini as being similar to that witnessed in Gurmeet Ram Rahim's ashram in Haryana's Sirsa, but without making any direct reference. An NGO has alleged that girls and women were kept at the university for 14 years and more. The government is likely to increase funding for the farm and rural sectors in the budget for the coming fiscal year to shore up political support in the countryside ahead of a raft of elections. The next budget will focus on farmers, rural jobs and infrastructure while making all attempts to follow a fiscal prudence path. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government won an election in his home state of Gujarat this week. A 22-year-old woman was torched in Hyderabad by a man under the Lali Guda police station limits. She has been shifted to the Gandhi Hospital for treatment. Police has started a probe and is yet to identify who the man is. Actor Amitabh Bachchan, Shiv Sena President Uddhav Thakre and Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut attended the launch function of film Thakre biopic on Shiv Sena Supremo Bala Sahib Thakre on Thursday in Mumbai. The film is all set to release on the 23rd of January 2019. The film will star Nawazuddin Siddiqui as the Shiv Sena founder, directed by Abhijit Fanse. The bilingual biopic has been written by Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut. A newborn boy, barely two days old, was found in a garbage pile in Chanchalguda, Hyderabad. The boy, according to the police, could have been abandoned by his parents. It was in the morning that the local residents noticed the boy who was wrapped in a cloth and informed the police. The police rushed to the spot and shifted the baby to the hospital. Police is investigating the case. The scheme to regularize unauthorized buildings in Tamil Nadu will draw to a close on Thursday with not many takers for it. The long-winded process involving submission of multiple documents, high penalty and lack of awareness is said to be the reason why the scheme was elicited a lukewarm response. UP till December 13th, only 35 people have filed applications for regularization. The flip-flop over the 2022 Commonwealth Games has ended with Birmingham being confirmed as hosts. The Commonwealth Games Federation stripped Durban of the hosting rights after the South African city ran into financial difficulties. Birmingham emerged as the only potential host to submit a bid before the final deadline of November 30th. Alexander Stadium will host 95% of the competitions and the 12,700-seater stadium will undergo expansion up to a capacity of 50,000. The only new venue proposed in Birmingham's bid is the Sandwell Aquatic Center, which will host swimming, para-swimming and diving.
The International Olympic Committee has warned Russian athletes hoping to participate as neutrals in the 2018 Winter Olympics that their kits cannot replicate the colors of the Russian flag. The IOC has reiterated one of its 13 stipulations related to Russia's ban from the Pyeongchang Games for state-sponsored doping, which states that individual items of clothing cannot be used to recreate the Russian tricolor in any form. No emblem or coat of arms is allowed on the kit, with the IOC only permitting colors. Words, uh, the Olympic athlete from Russia or OAR on a neutral white background. The Pyeongchang Winter Games will commence on February 9th.